Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about why this upcoming pattern is truly remarkable. And you may be uh, a little bit uh, perplexed by the word choice there, but let me explain this. So, we're looking at some anomalies that are just gonna be out of out of the range possibly of of you know this this chart right here so it's and and both sides possibly so you know on the bottom and the top so definitely a a unique pattern for sure so let's get into this slowly if you would like to subscribe to this channel please do so i uh, if you're new please do so if you are an old viewer consider liking the video um if you don't want to do anything at all perfectly fine so let's <laughs> let's get into this so right now we're looking at the gfs model it's the midnight model uh, i am recording this at two o'clock in the morning almost three actually um so it is uh, it is a bit late but that's when i usually go to sleep or stay up this late especially on the weekend notice that so right now uh we are looking at a mix of uh, weather you know it's a little bit below across uh below average across the south and quite a bit above across the west and into parts of the northeast but really no defined pattern now, i would say there's more warmth than, uh, than cold and but it, again it's almost july it's june 27th as i'm recording this and it will be released june 27th so okay we are uh six days after the summer solstice and that's technically when the sun is the strongest and the day is the longest so everything from now on is just going to be uh, getting shorter and cooler you may think right well usually there's a one uh, two to three week delay in the atmosphere from the sun so if the sun starts uh, i guess shortening its uh, uh shine upon ports of uh, you know north america usually takes two to three uh, weeks for atmosphere to respond so for the next two to three weeks it will be the warmest uh of the year uh, the warmest of the season you know the averages will be really high it will be just hot you know it, it would have to be really cold in order to, to it for in order to it uh, to feel cold anywhere where it's just slightly above average it's gonna feel hot at least you know by those standards where you live um, so i uh, you know, I mean, come late July, it will be already cooler, or, you know, probably around early June levels of temperatures. So you can see that right now we are looking at basically a pattern that's kind of in between. I would say there's definitely more warmth than the cool, but, you know, some models have different. You can see during the nights, it seems like the nights, uh, nighttime lows are more above average. And during the day, things start to cool off a little bit, or, or it's just not as above average. You know, they don't cool off quite literally. In terms of the anomalies are just aren't that great notice that we see a very very chilly air across parts of the west now this uh, is kind of uh, cool because uh, across when this is very cold uh, you know these parts in the mountains it's going to be snowing and you know it's july when this is going to be occurring so this is definitely um a uh, a pattern that uh, doesn't occur often, but it can happen. And if you were to look at the total snowfall accumulations, again, very localized, but they are there. And you can see across the higher mountains, across Idaho, Montana, into northwest parts of Yellowstone. If you're visiting Yellowstone, you may be caught by snow. So um, that, that is definitely a unique thing. Uh, so uh, let's go back to the temperature anomalies. I apologize. I clicked on the wrong thing. So that is definitely something really cool, right? You can see that that's basically as cold as it gets on this chart. Uh, there's, you know, negative 28 degrees. Okay, this probably gets as close as negative 20, negative 24. Very cold. Notice something, anything else? Look at that right there. I know that is in America technically, but just look at that. That is just, that's just con way more concerning than what's going on here. The fact is, um, you know, here in many of these locations where it, there's stuff growing, you know, the farmers, agriculture, Idaho potatoes, let's use a stereotype here. Um, you know, they're, they'll be fine. It won't be really cold enough to do much uh, of a threat, especially in June. Maybe some of the upper lo locations can be threatened by this in terms of frost. But notice that this is just more concerning. I mean, the, the, they're not accustomed to this heat. The heat that will be here is going to be warmer than it's going to be impossible, you know, impossible in parts of the Gulf Coast. This is just off the charts. That's literally as high as it goes. And you can see that this stays for a while and it just gets more intense as you get towards the Arctic. So quite literally, an Arctic heat wave is on its way. And yes, that is an oxymoron, but um, it's that's just an, what's going to happen. Notice the cool kind of expands across the west, and the cool kind of fades away, but this heat just maintains itself across portions uh, southern, uh, south of Hudson Bay and James Bay. Just absolute ridiculous anomalies. And I'll show you the temperatures in just a minute. I mean, it's it's concerning. Okay, so if you're spending 4th of July in Canada as a cool getaway, good luck, because that's 
I mean, that's just, I have, you know, I've yet to see such strong anomalies. If this were to, let's, let's give you a little example here. If this were, uh, those anomalies right here, July 4th, Saturday, if this were to be occurring across parts of Georgia, it would be 130, 140, 150 across parts of Georgia. I'm not exaggerating it. Not at all. If this were to be happening across Southwest, that would be possibly 160. I mean, th th these anomalies are just off the f off the charts. And notice that it, this is not really the best place for that to be happening. Um, especially since the animals just aren't accustomed to that. There, I mean, just to give you reference, right where this is, right at a little, the tip of my arrow, that, that's where polar bears live. There's a polar bear national park. It's where they have polar bears just normally living. If there's going to be hundreds where polar bear lives, you know, that's just... It's just not 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 good. <laughs> Let's look at a two meter temperature shaded. Now if you're, you can see that fuck it, you may be wondering, oh that's not too bad. Eighties and nineties, that is ridiculous for those locations. That is just off the charts. Notice if you think you live in, you know, if you think ninety seven is bad and you live in Chicago, just think how bad 90, uh, 97 is up there. Like people most if any people, you know, the population obviously density is much less, but for those that live there, the, the, a lot of them don't have AC. There's no need to. It doesn't get that hot in the summer. So when t temperatures like this happen and it's just persistent beyond a measure, I mean, so, like a pocket right there of possibly 100 plus. That's just uh, again off the charts. Notice uh, again, it cools off and it, it goes from really hundreds to 50s during the daytime because that is more more uh, you know average. It's that's at that point that's a below average as far as I'm sure. Oh yeah, it's a bit below average. But uh, you know, I mean, there could be uh, swings here that go from 100 to 50. Uh, that's definitely not good in any sort of way for it. It's a shock for humans, shock for animals, shock for plants. The heat is also going to be persistent across parts of uh, parts of Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas, right? But okay, that's it's still more uh, acceptable than what's happening up there. Notice that this is 106, 101. If you were to look at the anomalies, it's above average, but it's I don't know, maybe by four or six degrees. It's nothing compared to what on uh, you know they're experiencing up across parts of Canada. I mean, just let's take a look at that in terms of temperatures. Look at that, just widespread 90s. It's just, uh, I just, don't, I want to emphasize that this is not normal. It's 100% not normal. It's, it's not. Uh, there's going to be records broken here, and it gets even further extreme as you go up to the north. So, uh, notice the, the kind of like this tornado alley heat wave right here. Just an absolute, um, you know, it's going to be warm as well. And again, it would be hard, uh, hard come by if it weren't to be hot at this time of the year. It's early July, hottest time of the year, statistically. Now, again, um, you know, in order for it to feel cool, you have to be 20 to 30 degrees below average. You're just not going to get that in the summer. Usually, the jet stream is too strong, locked up. Arctic, uh, you know, polar blasts like during the winter just don't occur during the summer that easily. And you can see that there's 80s, 70s. I mean, across the central part of the country, nothing too extraordinary. But across the southeast, a little bit warmer. And across the plains, and again, just that persistent heat across Canada. In in the future, on uh, notice how it just cools down a bit. You, you can see there's some more 70s and 100s are went uh, kind of down to the east or down to the south. If you were to look at two meter temperature anomaly, there's a little bit more blue. And you can see that uh, it's it's a you can see there's like a wave right here. There's a wave and that kind of comes down into part of the U.S., which is good. But really, the heat is just pretty persistent. And um, again, just that heat around the James Bay right there is just unhealthy. So uh, definitely something we have to, I guess, you know, talk about on this. Even though it's not part of the U.S., it's just extraordinary. And it just goes to show you how extraordinary parts of the U.S. is. And I'm sorry I didn't show southern Texas or I might have been cut off Florida. But, you know, this this is just beyond extraordinary. It's way more uh, powerful than anything's occurring down there. This is going to affect way more, uh, it's going to be way more damaging than what's anything may happen across Florida and Texas. I don't want to jinx that. I don't want a hurricane to come, but that's literally what it would take in order to suffice that you know plants there's probably going to be drought there it just doesn't seem like in terms of precip I, i'm not sure it's going to be terribly dry uh rather dry actually you can see maybe a t half an inch of rain next 384 hours it could be drought that could lead to you know severe drought across those locations now i can't go to drought monitor because they don't show canada but it's just uh, an extraordinary pattern and it's part of North America, and North American pattern affects us. So, notice that rain across the eastern U.S. will be plentiful and across southern Canada, just not that location where it's the hottest. The west, generally a bit drier, but that's usually the case. They just don't see as much rain as the eastern U.S. And um, if you were to look at, say, the GEFS ensembles, notice that they're all showing, you know, the overall mean is quite a bit of precip. Now, let's look at the precipitation anomalies to tell you whether it's above or below. You can see above towards the north. 
north and just a bit below towards the south. Um, across this uh, Gulf Coast state, it's going to be a bit drier. And that's not good, especially since that's probably where it's going to be the warmest. Um, let's go back to this. You can see that the precipitation... It's not, you know, nothing, but it's still below average, as they do have quite a bit of more rain down to say parts of the north. Um, so, uh, let's look at now the, what the European model has to say in terms of the heat. Notice that uh, it does show the extraordinary heat across Canada. Uh, again, this would indicate warmer heights uh, than parts of, you know, central Alabama. And once you get this bright red color, that's, that's dangerous heat. And you can see that there's some sort of a dip here, probably some brought by some low pressure. So thankfully, it's not an all-out, you know, heat wave, but it's definitely above average, and I would say it's coming dominating. If you were to look at the 8 to 14 day outlook, notice that they have quite a bit of heat, a few random spots, if you will, no really rhyme or reason, kind of just these little below average spots, kind of associated with storm systems that are a bit stronger, and you can see a 6 to 10 day also um, above average for a good portion of the United States. So uh, a warm pattern is definitely dominating, so it'll definitely start feeling like summer. But again, that western uh, anomaly right there, especially at the beginning of that forecast, uh, that could that that's really that's really cool in my opinion. I think that's really dope uh, that they could be that uh, they could be that cold in uh, in June. And if you were to look at the two meter temperature shaded, I'm not sure if the NAM model captures this uh, this far out, but you can see yeah, you can see below uh, 32 degrees. So any precip would fall as snow basically at that time. And look at that sharp contrast. 32, 30s across the Yellowstone, and then just as soon as you get out of the mountain it rain, mountainous ranges, just, I mean, just absolutely blasting with heat. So imagine if you were to go on a road trip from Maine, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 80s, 100s, and then like 32 degrees. So that's what you get across America. That's why it's such a good severe weather spot um, in terms of, us, uh, you know, the tornadoes and just severe weather overall. These two ma air masses that clash, it just doesn't usually uh, fare well for... Um, non-severe weather, you know, fares well for good for good storms, strong storms. So, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed, I just wanted to give you this quick update, a really cool pattern, uh, you know, heat generally across much of the United States, even the West across the long range, but short range, cool across the West, and uh, Canada, again, just absolute ridiculous highs. So, uh, if you live there, I, I, you know, I, I feel for you. Um, so, uh, definitely, um, take, uh, take note of this. It's the hottest time of the year to this time, uh, late J June, early July. So it is technically very dangerous if you leave, you know, some like, pet, pet or kid in a car could get deadly very quickly. So please don't, uh, underestimate that. And keep in mind, um, it is the hot season. So, uh, heat strokes, um, heat exhaustion occurs more quicker than you'd normally expect, especially if it was being above average during the hottest time of the year. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.